Okay guys, welcome to another video. This week I'm going to be, it's not an installment of the student strength vlog, it's just a general strongman video today. It's something I'm really excited about. If Ethan could edit in a drum roll here. Events have been released for the Shaw Classic and this is something I am absolutely geeking out about at the minute. It's gonna be so good. Ever since he's announced it, I've been really excited about this. So that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. Before we get started though guys, big shout out to um, Nordic Botanics. Um, they just uh, shipped a bunch of stuff out to us um, yesterday. Big shout out to Liam from Nordic Botanics. If you haven't already tried their stuff, go try it immediately. Ethan made a video on it earlier on in the week, so go and check that out if you haven't already as well. But honestly guys, if you're looking for something to help you with like aches and pains after training, um, getting to sleep um, at night, making sure you get really good quality sleep, really good quality recovery, achy joints, achy muscles, anything, go to Nordic Botanics, give them a try. It's not just hype, it's not just anything. They are legit, they are 100%. Go try them out if you haven't already, you won't regret it. Okay, so getting this video kick started. So Brian Shaw, a few, I would say maybe a month or six weeks ago or so, announced that he was gonna hold his own competition um, this year in December, I think December 12th, at his own house, using his own equipment at his own gym. He just, he did it all as a part of trying to give back to the strongman community from himself, you know, and he wants to give guys an opportunity to compete in something where a lot of comp competitions this year have been canceled for obvious reasons. So ever since he announced it, I've been super excited about it. It's gonna be a real good opportunity to see um, some records broken, to see some class competitors going head to head on some really interesting events, which he just announced the other day. In total, Shaw has put this together all on his own. It's just him and his own team putting this together. Um, I think they're maybe gonna get some help from Rogue along the way. I think he's already announced it. I think it's Steve Slater. I can't remember this guy's first name, but the guy who makes the Slater logs and a lot of other equipment for the Arnolds and stuff, is got on board making some of the equipment that they're gonna be using. But he is doing this all himself um, as far as he can. He's even given a lot of money out of his own pocket to the prize, um, like into the prize pot for the winner to take home, which is unbelievable. And it's so cool for that to be happening at the minute. And it must be so cool for him to be able to do that for the sport that he loves, you know. So I think. Brian Shaw just is the gift that keeps on giving to the sport and I think we're really lucky to have him as a community because he is just, wow, he just, he just doesn't get any, wow, shut up. He just keeps on giving and I don't think anybody can put a cap on what he's going to do now because he just seems to be on a roll in terms of putting things together and getting stuff done for the sport and for everybody else. So the competitors have already been announced. They involve a lot of people you would expect. There's a couple guys in there that came as a surprise to me and I'm sure other people as well. But um, a lot of big names in the mix. Obviously Shaw's competing, Z's coming back, which is really cool. Terry Holland's competing. JF Caron, Jerry Pritchett, Robert Oberst. Don't know, I think he's just there because he's Brian's friend. I don't know. Rob Kearney's competing. Maxime Bordrello or something. I, I'm not too sure how to pronounce his second name, sorry. But he's competing. He made big waves at the Arnold Santa Monica involved in stopping Shaw going to last year's Arnold's, which is a big deal because um, that guy made some big waves there. So it'd be cool to see him competing. Then from the UK, Terry Holland's. Did I say Terry Holland? Might have said Terry Holland already. Adam Bishop's competing. Mateusz is competing, which is cool. If he comes in on form, he's going to be huge. I think he's going to make some big waves and he's going to potentially come home with a crown, I think. I think that's all the competitors. If I missed anyone out, I'm sorry. You should be able to find that online or we can put it in the description down below for all the competitors that are involved in this competition. But without further ado, we will get on to talking about the actual events themselves and who I think we should be watching out for. So event number one, there's a max log press. So log press, rising bar for max weight. 
um, it's going to be an elimination thing. So as the weight goes up, you either lift it or you don't. If you lift it, you move on. If you don't lift it, you're out. I think this is going to be really cool. Shaw has got a Slater log commissioned for this competition, which is really cool. They're like these epic looking big wooden like Austrian oak logs. They're really, really cool looking. It's the one that's used at the Arnold and it's kind of becoming a standard throughout the sport now that don't seem to be seeing many metal logs anymore in big competitions that is uh, obviously people to look out in for in this we've got rob kearney who is the current american log record holder robert over is also going to be there he's the former american record holder but whether he's actually there or thereabouts with it anymore i don't know i don't particularly like him as a competitor that much i don't think he deserves the hype he gets but He's a good presser. If he shows up on the day, it's going to be a cool battle. I'm sure Rob being there is going to drive him to do some big things because he's going to want his title back, obviously. So that's going to be a cool battle. I think seeing those two guys go toe for toe in a competition like that for max weight is going to be really interesting. So hopefully we see at least the American record broken, if not the world record, because Z is competing. Big Z is back. He has said for years now, that he wants to set a huge weight on the log ever since you know he's dominated the log for 15 years or something like that. he still holds the record might get broken this weekend at europe's but we don't know we'll just have to see but i mean you can't deny he is so far the best presser in history i'm um, so having him back and having him concentrate on something like that because present does look good at the minute in training so Hopefully he can come in, put up some big numbers and maybe push that world record on. So Shaw has been saying that this competition is going to be back to like the basics of strongman, like the roots of strongman. So the events aren't hugely like adventurous or like, you know, wacky or anything like that. They're all pretty strongman staples, you know, it, it, it's like pretty standard events, but they're going to be done really well and I imagine very heavy. So event number two is the yoke carry. So Shaw says he doesn't know the exact weight yet, but he plans for it to be around 500 kilos, which is big. That's a big weight. So I think people to look out for in this one. I mean, you've got Mateusz, who is an unbelievably good competitor at dynamic events. But with the yoke being that heavy, I don't know if he'll actually do as well as he usually does. One of the things that makes Mateusz so good is his speed. So if you watch him in a farmer's carry, he always wins because of his speed. His grip strength may not actually be that good, but he does the event so quickly that he doesn't need to hold on for that long, you know? So kind of, it'll be an interesting one because everybody's going to look to him and be like, wow, he's going to smash this. But with the yoke that heavy, I don't know, he might, he might turn on those Terminator eyes and go crazy and just smash through it. But it also might, you know, knock him for six and he, he, he might not deliver at all. You've also got Brian, who is an unbelievable yoke carrier. I think he, back in the Arnolds a few years back, he carried the heaviest yoke ever for the fastest time over 10 feet or whatever it was. He is a phenomenal yoke carrier. So he is, he's there to, to win that event, I think. But you've also got Rob Kearney, who proved at Worlds in 2019 that he is an unbelievable yoke carrier. I think the yoke went up to, it was either five or 600 kilos in the heats, and he did phenomenally well at that. He absolutely tanked through it. But also something interesting about this, Shaw said that they don't have the facilities to do one continuous carry. They don't have that length of, of track, so they're going to have to carry it down, turn it back again that's going to knock a lot of people because a yoke is hard enough as it is without having to carry it, set it down, turn around, pick think back up again, especially when it's 500 kilos, and then carry it again. That's going to be exhausting. So that's going to separate the, the good yoke carriers from the not so good yoke carriers. Um, that's going to really separate out the field. But then also with that event, you've got, you know, you can never rule out somebody like um, JF Caron or Bishop in that because Bishop is unbelievable at moving events. He's very, very good. But, you know, with a yoke that heavy, you just don't know how it's going to go. It might crush him. It might He might struggle to move it at all, but he might also fly through it. You just don't know. So I think it's going to be a really interesting, really, really interesting event. Event number three, it's a farmer's medley. So slightly different to a standard um, farmer's carry event where they're going to have three implements that need carried. So they're just, yeah, it's going to be, you know, three 
different farmers handles of varying weights um, I'd imagine it'll get heavier as it goes on so that's gonna be an interesting one it's a real real test it's stamina your grip strength and then your speed because if you can do it quickly it's gonna be much easier for you you know so somebody like Mateo she's really gonna stand out here you know getting that speed just just flying through it so you don't actually have to have it in your hands for that long and then as well as that I think Bishop's gonna be somebody to look out for because he is so quick he's so good at dynamic events um he's very much up there with Mateo and, and people like that so I think something like this where I doubt the handles are gonna be hugely heavy if there's three of them you know maybe the third one might be you know a lot heavier than the other two but i'd imagine if there's three different ones it's going to be more of an endurance kind of stamina type thing rather than you know all out grip strength but if it does turn out to be a grip thing i think shaw is there because he has he has probably one of the best grips in the world and yeah i think he you can't really rule him out with it, something like this uh i forgot to mention this earlier but the competition is going to be split across two days so the first day he said I think was going to be at his house in Colorado. The second one was going to be at his mountain home, which he's recently purchased up in the mountains in Colorado. It's going to be interesting seeing how the guys travel, how they deal with the altitude, because Colorado is already very high, but then the mountains are even higher. So it's going to be interesting, you know, um, endurance wise, you know, fitness wise, how the guys are going to deal with that. So that's another obstacle they're going to have to overcome in their own ways, but it's going to make it um, even more interesting um, from a spectator point of view. Um, day number two, um, we start with event four. Event four is going to be a Hummer tire deadlift. So this is going to be really cool because I don't think this has been in the Arnold since 2015. And as said in Shaw's video, um, there's only two Hummer bars in the world. One was made for the Arnolds, which they keep for their competitions. The other one was made by him, uh, for him, sorry, for him to practice for the Arnolds. So that's going to be really, really cool. I think um, it's just a really, oh man, it's, it's such a cool looking event, you know. Um, the bar just looks huge. Everything about it just looks strongman like, you know, it, it's it's like a, an iconic lift for the sport so i think guys to look out for in this obviously shaw you know he is a phenomenal deadlifter and he always performs well on you know events like this where the bar is slightly different or there's a slightly different variation you know something like that i think he can do really well in this and obviously with him owning the bar he's maybe got a bit more practice on it than most other people have who knows but then as i think he said in the video as well i would say at least half of the of the competitors going to this competition could maybe push like 500 kilos or more on this event which is going to be class you know you've got deadlifters like rob kearney who is pushing a thousand pounds on a standard bar at the minute uh adam bishop who's the same you've got jf Caron, who is one of the you know most consistent best deadlifters in the world in history you've got jerry pritchett as well who's a phenomenal deadlifter he's always up maybe top five top ten in the world for a max deadlift and then you've got z who still holds the world record in this event i think from back in 2015 is like four no 520 something kilos which is insane so i think that's gonna be really cool i think you know from a spectacle you know as a spectacle it's gonna be unbelievable to see that happen again because it's a really cool looking event you can't deny it and then the guys who are actually competing are going to be, they're, they're the best in the world. You know, they're, they're going to make it even better just by being there. You know, the, the actual back and forth between the competitors is going to be ridiculous. And because this event hasn't happened in like five years now, I'd say we're going to see it pushed to new limits. You know, you're going to see new weights lifted that have never even been, you know, like touched before. And I think even Adam Bishop uh, in training broke the silver dollar deadlift world record in training so it's unofficial but you know it's a very similar lift it's like probably around an 18 inch pool and a very whippy bar i'd say he could be one to watch in this but the other guys are going to do phenomenally well in it as well and even the guys who are competing but aren't such good deadlifters are still going to pull some big numbers so i think from a spectator point of view it's going to be a really really good event you're going to see some some big numbers pulled so it's going to be fun event number five on day two is the circus dumbbell for reps i believe he's as far as i know it's going to be like a 250 pound dumbbell so just over 100 kilos around about maybe 110 kilo dumbbell for reps so it's a good weight in terms of you know it is heavy but it's not so heavy that you're only going to see maybe two 
three reps at most, you're going to get a good amount of reps. Um, as Novikov proved during the Vita Strength, you know, you could get 10 plus reps on this event easily. So I think for this event, you know, you've got to watch out for Mateusz. He is an unbelievable dumbbell presser. He's got the world record at 150 kilos or something, I think. So 110 kilos is a lot less than that. And even if he's not just on form, he's still going to turn up as a competitor, um, as he always does, and he's going to deliver. And that weight's nowhere near his max. So you're going to see something big from him, I think. As well, you've got, you know, you've got other fantastic pressers there. You've got Z, you've got Rob Kearney, um, Shaw's, you know, no pushover in pressing events. Even, I think Adam Bishop's still up there with things like that. So, you know, it's going to be a real good um, battle between all those guys. I think um, it's going to be really interesting and you're going to get a good few reps. So it's not just going to be you know, two or three reps and I'm done, you know, you're going to get a good battle, you're going to get a good, it, it's, gonna, it's going to be something to watch, basically, you know, you're going to get like eight reps, 10 reps, 12 reps, maybe, you know, and then finally, we've got the sixth event, as per, it's Atlas Stones, um, it's going to be over a five stone run, so you're going to have maybe six, eight stones, um, maybe 10, but I don't know. I would say you're looking at six stones, maybe. It'll range from probably 120 to maybe between 200 and 220, somewhere in there, I think it's going to be the heaviest stone. And so obviously, as standard in Strongman now, it is the final event. It's going to tie things up well. You know, it's a good way to finish, I think. And if they offer double points, as they do in World Strongest Man, it could be a really interesting finish. You know, you could have some guys that maybe weren't just as good down the table shooting their way right, like right up to the top. We'll just have to see what way that that um, that pans out because, you know, it's a stone run. Anything can happen. You know, you've got guys like Shaw, you've got guys like Mateus who are phenomenal stone lifters. You know, you've got JF who's a really really consistent high scorer all the time in competitions. He's going to be there thereabouts. You know, at that point in the competition. But all you need is, you know, to miss the the, the um, platform. You know, you need to, you know, miss the pickup on the stone by half a second, and next thing you know, you're, you're two, three places down in the standing. So you you really just don't know with this event. So that's why it's a good way to finish. You know, it, anything can happen, and it's just a staple of the sport now. You need to be good at stones, and if you're not good at stones, you're not winning. You know. So it's there at the end, it's there to separate out the good from the bad. And I think it'll make a really good finish to what sounds like a phenomenal competition so far. So there's my thoughts on the events so far. I think as well, it's worth noting that, you know, everyone who's there is professional. You know, at the end of the day, they're gonna come, they're gonna come looking for that prize money because they're offering a good amount of money for this competition, I think. Shaw's trying to promote that kind of higher pay in competitions and stuff, and trying to get more money into the sport. Yeah, so everybody is gonna come looking for that that first place prize money, you know, obviously. So nobody's gonna come not wanting to win, you know. So it's gonna be a competition. It's gonna be competitive. Everyone's gonna wanna put on a show, really, because a lot of these guys might even be untested throughout the year in terms of, you know, on a competition, especially an international competition. So they're going to want to do something big and they're going to want to showcase what they've been working on all year. And then you've got guys, obviously, I haven't mentioned much of, like Terry Holland, who is, you know, just a generally all-round good strongman. He's going to do really well in a lot of those events, you know, a lot of those grip events, a lot of those moving events, he's going to do really well. And he's going to score usually in the top five, top three in a lot of those events. Um, maybe not so much in the pressing events, but he's a phenomenal deadlifter phenomenal dynamic athlete so he's going to score big in those and he's going to be up there with you know in the overall standings he's going to be up towards the, the top of the leaderboard you've also got jf Caron, who is a consistently phenomenal strongman he is always i think for the past three or four years or something he's been fifth in world strongest man which is nothing you can look past he has been nine times canada's strongest man he's won various other titles as well i think and he is just phenomenal you know so you can't look past guys like that or Bishop, even though he might, you know, I think he's going to do really well in this, to be honest. I think it's, it suits him well. There's a lot of moving. There's a lot of, it's a lot of events that just played his strong points, really. So hopefully as one of the only British representatives there as well, he does well and brings something cool back on the first year of this competition. That would be, you know, something really good for, for British athletes, I think. As well as that, you know, you can't look past Big Z. I mean, he might only be coming in to do the log. I don't know. I just, I'm excited to see him back. I hope he does something fantastic. And 
it's just you know i mean who doesn't love z you know he, he's he's back you know Whoa. so that's gonna be class you know and i think having him back might bring a lot more publicity to the event or something like that as well which is always good but yeah absolutely guys they i think the whole event's being covered on you know i think it's on espn or something but there will be a lot of coverage for this. It's a big thing. You know, it's not just something that's happening in Shaw's Garage. So it's going to be a big deal. And I'm really, really excited for it. As always, guys, check out our new releases on the Spreadshirt merchandise stuff. I don't know. Go buy stuff. It's good. I would. I like it. Yeah. But as per, like, comment, subscribe, get involved, like, on Instagram, Facebook. And we're everywhere, you know, get involved with us somewhere, get, interact with us. We love it. We really do love the support we're getting at the minute and we're just snowballing. You know, everything's getting better. We're growing and you guys seem to be liking what we're putting out and we're really like putting it out for you. So until next time, guys, I will catch you all later.